and welcome back again uh, to some more fun with Android programming. So it's been a while since I've done a video lecture because of Christmas break uh, here at Rolls Holman, uh, but we'll see if we can get back on track with uh, learning about menus. Uh, just to kind of share where we're at in the course, kind of big picture like, uh, we're kind of starting up a uh, uh, new, new topic today. Um, so this kind of new sequence is on menus, preferences, and dialogues. Admittedly, three rather separate things, but they can be used collectively to make a couple of a couple of fun apps and things you can do. Uh, so today, what we're going to do, if you'd like to follow along, the slides are, um, as always, available on the course website, uh, which is just uh, rollsholman.edu/android. Uh, if you'd like to follow along, you can just go ahead and uh, and click on those. Uh, let's see where we're at. The menus one. Uh, and then there's going to be a couple files that we're going to download. If you want to go and grab those now, you can. Uh, so let's talk about menus first, and then we'll start our demo up for today. Uh, so the app we're going to make, we're just going to call it Hello Menu. Um, whenever you hit the menu button in our prior apps, uh, nothing would happen. Uh, so we're going to start making something happen when we hit that. When you hit the menu button, it shows you um, the options menu. Uh, this is actually the icon menu. Uh, some things you can do with menus, you can make radio buttons, uh, you can make check boxes, uh, you can also make context menus, uh, which is kind of like a right-click menu, um, except for it happens on a long press. Uh, there are really only four types of menu, icon menu, expanded menu, uh, which are the two things that make up the options menu, um, a context menu, which is kind of like a right-click, um, and then either of these can make uh, the sub-menu. So some people might say there's two because there's options and there's context. Um, other people might say there's four, yada, yada, yada. Uh, Google actually does an extremely strong job um, of explaining uh, menus. Um, all of the information from today's lecture uh, comes from this resource. Um, I mean, there are, of course, other things online as well, but, but menus aren't that complex. Um, and Google does a really nice job um, of talking about menus. Um, you can read through this and you can get a lot of good information. But you're here and you're listening to me, uh, so let's uh, let's get started. Um, ooh, talking about menus, then we'll start doing it. Uh, the first type of menu that you'll see is the icon menu. Uh, this is the one that pops up uh, whenever you hit the menu button. If uh, you're allowed six icons in your icon menu, I was fair warning you're not supposed to put color in the icons. Um, but for this app, it, it kind of worked better to put color in there, uh, so I did. But if you read the guidelines, you're not supposed to use color. Um, but, eh, I did. Um, if you have more than six, it will automatically make this more uh, button for you. Um, and if you click on the more button, that will launch the expanded menu. Uh, the expanded menu is also part of the options menu, but it behaves very differently. Um, you cannot have icons, for example, in it, so it kind of changes the style. Um, it also, for some reason, tells you the shortcut key for it, um, which I guess, you know, if you've got a lot of menu items, you might want shortcut keys. Um, so it's a little different. Uh, the other type is a context menu. This is kind of like the right click. Um, there is no right click, um, so it's the long press. Um, and different views can have their own context menus. Uh, we're just going to make a very simple one in this app. We'll do that at the end. Uh, the other thing that menus can do is they can launch submenus. Um, so we're going to be playing with some submenus. Also, when we launch our submenus, we're going to be playing with groups um, to where we can make radio buttons and check boxes very easily uh, within the menu. So without further ado, let's start our app and let's start doing some of this stuff. Uh, so create a new uh, Android project uh, called Hello Menu. Um, I'll go ahead and do the same while you're getting your fired up. Um, I've made this once before, so I'm going to have to call my project Hello Menu Video. As always, you can pick any build target you want. Uh, nothing here is new, so I'm just going to pick 1.5 um, because that works with the device I've still got. Uh, package, you can call it whatever you want. I'll go with the reverse DNS for Rolls Holman um, and Hello Menu. I like to make my packages lowercase, so I'll change it to lowercase. Um, my activity, so you can just say hello menu in three places. The activity, the app name, and the project name, uh, and that'll be just fine. <clears throat> Press finished, um, and it should start up new uh, app for you. 
Uh, it's amazing how quickly um, my projects get filled. I'll go ahead and expand this one. Uh, you get the same basic stuff uh, that you're used to. Depending on which version you used, you probably got, instead of just a drawable folder, you might have gotten um, a low, medium, and high folder. If that was the case, I do recommend you go ahead and make a drawable folder um, because if, if there's something that you want to just get used everywhere, it will default to it. So go ahead and make one if you don't have one. Uh, let's go ahead and grab a couple resources uh, to go into this project. Um, for the icon menu, it would be a pity not to have any icons. Um, so let's go ahead and download some icons. Um, I just kind of made these, stole them from some things online. Um, stole a couple uh, from Google um, in their icon design, the one that's that look nice, I stole, right? Um, so you can go ahead and click on the link here uh, to download those. Um, and it'll download a zip file for you. You could also get to the same page um, from, the, from the main course website. Uh, once you've uh, got them uh, unzipped, uh, go into Finder for a Mac or Windows Explorer for a, for a Windows machine um, and just go ahead and copy them from here um, and paste them into that drawable folder. Cool. So now we've got a bunch of... Uh, a bunch of little icons to play with. There are a lot of rules um, about how you make icons, what icons should look like, uh, things like this. Um, to refer to the rules, there are some guidelines that, uh, that Google gives you. Um, you should look at these, um, and if you look at them closely enough, you'll notice that mine cheat because of the color. Uh, they tell you things like what the recommended pixel sizes are for low, medium, and high densities. Uh, they also recommend a certain naming scheme uh, for when you name things. Um, so you'll see that like mine all say like hello or IC underscore menu, uh, then something else. Um, and then my icon for the app says IC underscore and then hello menu because that's the name of the app. Speaking of that icon, let's go ahead and uh, update that one first. Surely the, uh, the most important, a little bit of sarcasm there. Um, is giving your app um, a cool little menu. Um, I stole this online somewhere and I, I like it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make mine uh, with that cool little menu. So dive into the manifest here and change it from drawable slash icon to drawable slash uh, hello menu. So I see underscore hello menu. Uh, once you've got that saved, you can go ahead and uh, fire it off on the emulator. Um, make sure it uh, it pops up. So when it pops up, um, it should just say "Hello World" and then "Hello Menu." Um, and if you go look at it, um, well, here's the one I did from in class. Um, it should show you this neato little icon um, and say "Hello Menu" under it. This is the one that I'm actually doing right now. Um, so everything's good. Um, it opens. Uh, we've got this neat little icon. One thing I like about Android is it allows alpha values in their icon. Uh, currently iOS doesn't allow alpha values, which is kind of dumb. Um, but you can see that it looks nice. Um, little menu. All right, back on the uh, back on the real lecture stuff. So there are three important functions that you need to know about for the options menu. Uh, these are all defined within an activity. Um, and you are subclassing activity. Um, that's the only only Java file we've got, right? Is um, a subclass of the activity. Um, so whenever you want to make a menu, uh, these functions will get called automatically for you. Uh, the first one you need to know about is on create options menu. Um, this function is called when the menu button is pressed. Uh, the very first time you press the menu button, um, it calls this function. Um, and this is where you determine if you're going to create a menu to present or not. If you do not have this function, uh, nothing will happen. And just, just nothing will happen when you hit menu. Um, but that's what we're going to fix today. So we're going to override this function. One little detail to say is that this function only is called once uh, when the menu is first created the very first time. So if you ever want to make changes to it and have it like appear differently later times, or like, you know, sometimes do this depending on what state the app's in, or sometimes do that. Um, you might want to also override on prepare options menu. This one's called every time, um, and you can use it for like some, some tweaking adjustments based on the state of the app. 
So those two are very important. The other one that's very important is on options item selected. Uh, so this one is called whenever a user clicks um, on a menu item, um, and it's called and it tells you what item uh, was clicked. So these three are very important. There are two ways to make a menu. Um, this is pretty common with, with a lot of like the same things we did with the graphical uh, user interfaces. You could do it declaratively, uh, which means in an XML file, um, or you could do it programmatically. Uh, not too shocking, uh, Google's recommendation is to go with the um, XML version. Uh, so that's what we're going to do as well. To be honest, if your menu is really simple, um, it's, it's kind of faster to do programmatically, um, but it's better to do it with the XML. Um, and so we're going to make a, an XML file called um, the options menu. Um, and you can do um, a lot more decoupling of your app um, if you go with the XML approach. So that's what we're going to use. Some quick examples before we get into the, uh, into the details. Um, if you look at Google's example uh, menu, um, the outermost element is a menu object, and then inside that menu object are the items. An item will pretty much always consist of a title, that's like the bare minimum, and usually it'll consist of an ID, um, assuming that you want to know who got clicked, like in that callback function. And then you can see that this one also has an icon, so this one must be um, within that, that icon menu. Um, so it, it might want to have an icon. So let's go ahead and start adding some code uh, to hello menu. Um, and that code that we want to add is on create um, options menu. Start typing a little bit of it, hit control space, um, and then let it, uh, let it fill in the rest. Make my font just one bigger here. All right, so we've got this on uh, create options menu. Uh, whenever you get one of these stub, stubs, you always have to decide what do I want to do about calling super. Um, to be honest, I believe in this one that you don't have to call super, um, but usually I'd rather be safe than sorry. Um, so the thing that you do a lot is instead of returning whatever super returns, um, you return uh, true. So the boolean here is, you know, did this handle the function, um, or should I keep sending it up the responder chain? Um, we're handling it, so we're just gonna we're gonna return true no matter what. Um, but in this case, I did choose to call super. Um, I don't think it's necessary, but but I did. Um, my, my guess is anytime there's a return statement, you shouldn't call the super, um, but I'm not, I'm not sure, so I'm going to call it. All right, so let's say what we're going to do here. So first, we're going to get the menu inflator, which will be something new to you, um, ER. Um, and then we're going to use the menu inflator um, to make um, objects in memory. Um, out of the XML resource. Sometimes I like to be a little wordier just so it's uh, kind of here for the record. Um, so what an inflator does, ah, let's go ahead and type the code first. Um, so let's create a menu inflator um, and I'll just call it, I don't know, I'll call it the options menu inflator ER. Um, an activity has a function called get menu inflator Obviously, Google realized this is something you would need to do, um, so they just kind of made a special inflator for menus. Um, and then what you need to do is you need to say, um, hey, menu inflator, uh, do that thing you do, which is inflate. Um, and so you're going to inflate um, a menu resource um, into the menu that was passed into this function. The resource which we need to make is going to be at um, it's going to be a menu uh, called the options menu. Um, it's going to be .xml. It'll give you a warning because the folder doesn't exist, um, and that's expected. Um, so just to talk about what an inflator does is an inflator um, takes the declarative XML file. Um, that XML file, when you compile, it gets put into something more efficient, right? So it's not really XML anymore. Um, but it takes that resource, which is part of your like program memory in Flash, um, and it expands it and it puts it into the memory 
uh, so that your phone can use it, right? Um, you've actually used inflators before, right here, the set content view. It does two things. It, it makes it the view um, and it inflates uh, that XML. So you've used them before, you just haven't called it in an inflator yet. So we're going to inflate this thing that we better make. Um, so we're going to go ahead and make it. Um, menus should go into a folder called menu. So a new folder called menu. Um, and then we need to create a new XML file. I'm kind of annoyed at Eclipse. If you right click and you say new, you don't get that Android XML. Um, you have to either say file, I feel like I've said this a billion times, new, um, or I'm gonna use the hotkey, uh, which is option command N on a Mac. Um, Android XML file. I like that because it stubs in a couple things for you. So we're gonna call it the options menu .xml. Uh, the stub that I wanted to make for me is a menu. I was smart enough to figure that out based on the folder. And you can see that what it creates, it just kind of creates that, that opening line for you uh, plus the root element, which has to be a menu. Uh, so let's go ahead and put something in here, and you'll notice that it, it cleaned up the, the error messages for you. Let's go ahead and put something in here. So click on Add, um, and we're going to add a menu item. Um, you can add a group as well and group items, but for now we're just going to stick with items. That's what we're going to focus on to start with. Um, so we're going to create a menu item. Uh, this menu item, I'm going to give it the ID of yellow background. The title that we're going to put in here, uh, we're going to use a string resource. Um, so let's go back to the slides. So it's nice to have the slides out because we're going to do this a few times. Um, and just copy paste from the slides. Um, so the slides, string resources are easy, right? So just grab this new chunk of strings, uh, copy them, and open up your strings.xml um, and paste them in. I'm going to do this kind of fast because you can pause the video if you want uh, to go get those. Cool. Uh, so pause and make sure you catch up. The best way to learn this is by actually doing it. Um, so if you haven't done anything at all yet, pause it and get caught up. Um, all right, so let's say the title for this um, is going to be that uh, yellow background string. Um, another thing you can do is you can add the icon. Um, I'm kind of frustrated that you can't auto-complete this. Um, so, I mean, you can, you can so yeah, I'm, and I don't, why they don't have a browse, um, I don't know, it's beyond me. Um, there must be some reason, but, um, so you just have to learn to type. Um... Uh, so I see underscore menu, underscore yellow, underscore background. You can also add a shortcut key if you'd like. Um, personally, I don't find the shortcut keys on menus useful, but maybe some users do, and it's easy to add. Um, so I'll just say, hey, it's yellow. Cool. Um, so we've actually got an XML file. Um, we've got a, a create options menu. Um, so if we run it now um, and we hit the menu button, um, I should have shown you before that it did nothing, but it did nothing before. Um, if we hit the menu button now, uh, we should see um, that our, our first menu for this class, at least, the title displayed very prominently um, and the icon uh, also displayed. If you click it, um, it'll go away, uh, but that's kind of all it'll do. Uh, so let's go ahead and give you a minute. Um, see if you can add some more. Um, so just go ahead and give it a give it a pause um, and see if you can add um, I don't know three or four more menu items. All right, so I'll go ahead and get mine caught up as well. Um, I find that anytime you're you're mass producing something, I, I find it easier just to do it in code. Um, so once I've kind of made one, um, I'll just kind of Make, I don't know, I'll make three more. Um, I'll pick something here. Let's make a yellow. Uh, let's do a blue one. Um, and then I'll make white. We gave you six options, so you can uh, take your pick of uh, these colors, or you also get green, uh, black, um, and I think red is also in here. Cool. And so if you run it uh, with, with more than one, uh, you should see them uh, all pop up. Oops, must have typoed somewhere. Oh, 
I lost a lost a quote somehow. Ah. I'm gonna pause it and fix it, but I'll just go ahead and show you how I fix it. Sometimes it, it gets confused. I mean, I, I got it confused by leaving off this quote. Um, when that happens, you can typically clean it. Um, so clean out um, the hello menu. Um, and if you clean it, um, it fixes it right up, right? So always a pain, but sometimes, especially that, um, that r.java file, the, the generated one, it just gets confused sometimes. Um, so you can see that you've got three menu items. Um, also note that your menu is going to look slightly different in horizontal versus landscape, so you can decide what it should look like. Uh, you get a maximum of six items. Uh, just to kind of show you what happens if you have more than six items, um, just go ahead and take however many you've got um, and just kind of copy-paste them on here a couple times. I copy-pasted them twice, so I now have nine menu items. Um, we're going to delete this in a second. I just wanted to show you the expanded menu. Um, so if you have more items than six, it automatically makes the more button for you, which is nice. If you click the more button, um, it launches the expanded menu. The expanded menu has very different rules. Um, you'll notice there are no icons. Um, it actually can do things like um, push buttons and, and uh, check boxes. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, uh, but it actually can do things like that. Um, so you can see that's the expanded menu, which is kind of neat. Now that you've seen it, um, <laughs> get rid of it. To be honest, um, most of the time I wouldn't recommend using the expanded menu, uh, but, it, but it can be useful. All right, I'll go ahead and catch the slides up a little bit here. Um, so this is making the uh, menu file, um, seeing one menu item. Um, the next thing we'd like to do is we'd like for clicking this to actually do something. Uh, we'll start off by having it make a log message, um, and then we'll have it actually change the background color. So let's start off and let's make a, a log message. Uh, so anytime you're going to do logs, um, it's typically a good strategy to make um, a tag. So I'll do a, um, a private static final string. Um, my system has been to just use the initials of the app, um, or the word if it's short. Um, this is called Hello Menu, so I'll just make a, a little HM to use as my tag. You could type it everywhere, uh, but it's considered good form uh, to uh, go ahead and make um, constants for things like that. Alright, so if we want the clicks to do something, uh, we're going to need to override the function um, on options item selected. Um, if you start typing it, hit control space, um, it'll auto-generate the uh, tabs for you, or the stub for you. Um, this one works a lot like uh, the on-click method um, in that it sends you um, information about like who clicked it, or in this case, like which menu item it was. And typically what you're going to do is you're going to do a switch uh, based on the ID. So we'll go ahead and do that here. Um, and so in this case, we're going to do a switch based on which menu item got clicked. Um, so I've got uh, one called yellow backgrounds. What I want to do if they click on the yellow background is I want to print a little log. Um, and I'll just have it say yellow background. Um, you'll have to uh, do a control shift O um, to be able to use logs. And then there are different ways you could set this up. What I'm going to choose to do is instead of breaking, um, I'm just going to return true. Um, and if it doesn't fall into one of the ones I catch, um, I'll just let it return whatever super does. Again, I've got this debate about whether I'm supposed to be calling super or not. And I'm pretty sure that this one I'm doing totally right. Um, in that if you handle it, just return true. Uh, but there's no reason to call the activity super in this case. Um, but if I don't handle it, sure, I'll, I'll send it on up. Why not? Great. Um, and then you should go ahead and stick on other cases for your other um, items. Um, so in my case, I've got a blue and I think uh, white is what I chose to do. Uh, and I suppose it should say blue and white in the log. Great. 
Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get my log cat together. Um, I'm going to make a new filter for um, HM. Um, so you can just click on the green plus and just make an uh, HM name and an HM log um, filter. I've already got one from class here, so I'm just going to use this one. And then when you launch it, uh, when you click on uh, menu items, um, we'll see that it actually is getting called in the logs. So if I say menu and I say yellow, um, it says yellow background, blue, it does blue, white, white. Uh, you can click to your heart's content, right? Um, we also made those quick keys. So if I hit menu and then I hit Y, um, that'll be a yellow. If I hit menu, then W, that was white. And then for me, B was blue. So that's actually the important part, right? So I mean, that's, I mean, this, this right here is, is the important part. It's doing the callback. Um, while it is the important part, um, it's not much fun for a user, right? Because they, they don't see your logs. Um, so let's have it actually do something. Um, let's have it actually change the background color. Before we do that, though, uh, we're going to have to do a little bit of layout work. Uh, so let's go ahead um, and let's, uh, let's make it actually change the color. Um, but let's get main.xml ready. Um, let's do some work in here. What I'd like for you to do here is I'd like for you to practice. So I'm going to describe uh, what it is I want you to do. Then I want you to pause the video and go do it. Um, so what I'd like for you to do is I'd like for you, instead of using a linear layout, um, to switch it to a frame layout, because a frame layout would be fine for us. Go ahead and give the frame layout an ID, because we're going to be changing his background color. The ID I gave it uh, was I called it just frame underscore layout. Uh, which is a fine name. And then um, you're going to change the text view. Uh, we're going to do something kind of wacky with the text view. The text view, we're going to let the height wrap content, which that's pretty normal. And then the width, what we're going to do, uh, because it's going to be useful later, is we're going to specify um, an exact pixel width. Um, so instead of fill parent or wrap content, I'm going to say 200 um, density independent pixels. In general, this is a very bad strategy to give something an exact size because there's so many different Android devices. Um, but for here, it'll work out just fine. And there are times where you'd want to make something a certain size. Um, and, you know, you just kind of assume it's for a phone <laughs> um, as opposed to being for, like, any different size phone. All right, the other things I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and center that up um, in its parent. That one is layout gravity. So you can see the box is centered in its parent. And then also go ahead and center the text inside of it. So you can see not only is it centered, but the text inside of it is centered. And give it a name. I called mine Movie Quote Text View uh, because it's going to eventually hold movie quotes like at the end of this app. So pause the video, uh, take a little bit, and see if you can make that happen. So hopefully things went smoothly for you. Um, I'll go ahead and do mine real quick just to kind of get it caught up. Uh, so I'll open up my uh, min, or sorry, my layout, my main.xml. Um, anytime I edit uh, XMLs, I find it helpful to have uh, the layout, or sorry, the um, outline and property views open. So it looks like I've got property open already. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring the outline back up. Cool. So the first thing I want to do is I want to switch this from a linear layout uh, to a frame layout. That's actually easiest to do in code. So I'm just going to hop into code here and switch this to a frame layout. Uh, once I've switched it to a frame layout, this uh, property for orientation no longer makes sense, so I'm going to delete it. And then once I've done that, um, I can do the rest easier probably in the properties window. Um, so I'm going to hop back over into the graphical view um, and into the properties area. For um, the frame layout, I want to give it a tag. I'm just going to call it frame layout because it's the only one. That one was pretty easy. Um, and then for the text view, um, I'm going to make it that set width. Um, I'm going to center it in the view. Um, and then I'm also going to center its text um, inside of it. So you can see right now it's not. 
uh, and then presto, uh, now it is centered. And I'm going to give it the ID of uh, movie uh, quote text view. Cool. Um, and you can see the name show up up here, um, and we should be good to go. Like we've done so many times, um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to capture these views. Um, so to capture these views um, inside on create, I'll just close these and if I need them again later I'll open them back up. Um, inside on create, uh, we're going to capture them um, and we're going to store them off to member variables. So I'm going to have a member variable for the text view called movie quote uh, text view. And then I'm also going to have a private member variable for the frame layout uh, called, well, let's call it frame layout. No genius names here. Uh, do a control shift O to import those. And then uh, capture them. R.id.moviequotetextView. Um, and then also capture uh, the frame layout. Love the autocomplete. Great. And so you can go and pause it, uh, get those captured, um, and now we can use them later. Um, so let's go ahead and use this frame layout um, to set these background colors. So whenever somebody clicks on the yellow button, uh, what I want to do is I want to take that frame layout um, and I want to set the background. There are three options for setting the background. Um, you can set the background by passing in um, a color. Um, so it's um, colors in Java are actually int, so it says int color. Um, well, then this is the one we're going to use. Um, the easiest way to do it is to use some of the predefined colors, so color dot red, color dot yellow. Um, that's what we're going to do here. The other things you could do is you could actually set it to a drawable, so it could be like an image um, if you wanted to do that. Um, and the other thing that you you could do if you wanted custom colors and not one of the like predefined ones um, is you should probably make it as an XML resource, um, so that colors.xml. Um, the right way to do it is probably to do that, uh, but for what we're doing today, this top option will work just fine. So in this case, I'm going to say, uh, give me uh, the color yellow. Um, so set background to yellow. If they click on blue, uh, give me blue. And if they clicked on white, uh, give me white. So let's give this a whirl, and hopefully we've made something that is much more useful to our users. So if you hit menu um, and you say yellow background, um, it makes it yellow. Blue will make it blue and white will make it white. Plus whatever colors you added um, will we'll also change the colors. Cool. Um, so this is um, <clears throat> your first example. You should have a pretty good grasp of the options menu. It's not that complex. It's really just buttons, right? So buttons and, and listeners. Um, so pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to start diving into uh, submenus. Um, and also, while we're doing submenus, we're also going to look at groups um, so that we can make radio buttons and checkboxes. So I'll catch the slides up a little bit here. Um, so this is some of the stuff we did for setting the color, uh, for setting the, uh, the different items. Um, for taking care of the clicks. Um, oh, I showed you the expanded menu, I guess, too early when I did it versus what the slides did. Um, so the new stuff we're going to add is a submenu. Uh, what that looks like, this is Google's example, um, is you've got a menu and then you've got items. Um, and then you can see that inside an item, you can place another menu. So you can actually, it's really just a menu, um, but it's, it's inside uh, the other one. Oh, there's some weird typo uh, there. Um, doesn't really matter, but it had a extra um, quote on there. Oh, well. Um, another thing we're going to look at, so there are two, two topics we're going to introduce. Uh, the second topic we're going to introduce is groups. Um, so groups are, they go around items. So they're kind of outside items. So items are inside the group. Um, and the group is useful for two reasons. Uh, one is you can set all the properties um, of that group at the same time. So, for example, if you had three menu items that you didn't want to show, 
you know, like at certain times in your game or whatever. Um, you can turn them all off via the group. The other reason you would want it is if you want clickable behavior um, for radio buttons and check boxes, which is what we're going to do. Uh, so for this uh, menu item, uh, there's going to be a menu item called change the text color. Um, and then there's going to be, you know, the same options for this, uh, the, the six colors that we're kind of using. Um, I won't use them all, but I'll use some of them. So let's go ahead and copy over the string resources first, uh, just to kind of get this, uh, this section of the app ready. Here, my dog, dog Kingsley over there. He's wanting to say hello. Um, so we've got the strings ready to go. Uh, let's go ahead and add this menu item. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do it in the GUI. So I'll say add item. This one doesn't actually need an ID because I don't need to reference it in code. So I'm just going to take the ID off on this one. Um, it, it, it will call the submenu, right? Um, it does, however, need uh, a title, which is going to be text color. And since it's in the options icon menu, uh, we'll give it a drawable. Uh, so it'll be, I think there's one in there called brush. Menu brush. Uh, you can give it a shortcut if you like. I don't even want to bother. Um, and when you click on this item, it's going to launch a submenu. Um, so we're going to add a submenu. You can see by default it gives you the option to create something inside this item um, or you could have made something at the top layer. Um, this one we, we do want to put it inside, so a submenu inside. And then inside the submenu we're going to have items, uh, but these items we're going to surround them in a group. Um, so we're going to put them into a group because we want that clickable behavior. Um, you can certainly do submenus without groups, but, but we're, we're doing it with groups. Uh, the group um, would need an ID if you were going to like use it to set properties for that reason. Uh, but since we're just using it for a clickable behavior, we can get rid of the ID. Um, but we do need to set what type of clickable behavior we want. Um, so uh, none would put like you know just a normal menu. All would put check boxes, and single puts radio buttons. This one's going to be radio buttons. Inside this group, we're going to put some items. Um, and these will need IDs because these are going to call code. Um, so we'll say uh, red text color. Um, it'll use the title uh, red. Um, no need for an icon uh, because it, it wouldn't display an icon anyway. Um, and there are a few other things that you could set about it, uh, but, but I think that's plenty for now. Uh, to kind of mass produce it here to get a few more, um, I'm going to just do that in code. Uh, so I've got my item, and I'm going to copy it a few times uh, to make a couple different options. Um, I'm going to add uh, red, green. Green's nice and ugly, but I haven't used it yet. Um, let's add, uh, we'll add a black and a white as well. You can also set... Um, who is checked by default. Um, I'll hop back over into the GUI uh, to do that. Um, so let's say we wanted white uh, to be set by default. Um, you can say checked and you could say true um, and that will set it to white. They also make it pretty easy to rearrange them um, if you wanted to, to move things around um, you know, to your heart's content. Uh, you can see that over in code um, it's um, added just Checked um, is equal to true. That's all it added. Cool. So there should be enough now to where when we run it, um, we should be able to launch a submenu. Um, and it'll have radio buttons, which is kind of neat. So if I say menu, um, you can see I've got my new menu item for text color with my illegal color and my icon. When I click on it, it launches a submenu, which is neat. Um, and then that submenu has a group inside it to make radio buttons. Uh, you can click on them, um, and it'll dismiss the menu. One thing that did kind of surprise me whenever I first started working uh, with, uh, with these clickable uh, singles, I would have assumed that when I clicked red, it would automatically like save which one I clicked last. Um, it, that's not the case. Um, if you want to change who's highlighted, 
Um, it is up to you uh, to, to take care of moving it, moving it around. Uh, I was kind of surprised by that, but, but no biggie. Um, and the way you take care of that is in code. Um, so we gave all these IDs so that we could reference them in code. Even though it's in a submenu, it still calls the same function on options item selected. In fact, technically, when you clicked on that, that text color, it actually called this function before, uh, but it, it used super is what it, is what it did, and super didn't really do anything. Um, but we do want these to do something. Um, so let's say the red color, uh, what we'd like for it to do is we would like for it to change the movie quotes um, text color. Um, I believe it's set text color. Um, and we'll just do the same thing we did before. We'll just say color.red for this one. And we'll return true. Another thing I would like to do is I would like to um, make that radio button selected so that next time if they launch it again, the right button is selected. And that's something you can set on a menu item. Um, and by the way, the way you learn all this is, um, I mean, you look at the help um, and, and you go through and you learn about things. Uh, one way to bring up the help is inside Eclipse, if you hit um, F2 um, or Function F2 on a Mac, um, you can learn all about menu items and the things they can do, right? Um, so, for example, a menu item, um, it's got a set checked um, is one of the things that it can do, um, and, you know, whether it's got a check mark or whether it's selected. Um, so, <clears throat> item dot set checked. Um, and we want it to be true. Cool. And uh, now mass produce it for all your others. Order doesn't matter. Um, so it doesn't have to be consistent with the way you typed them before. So I've got a, a green, a white, a black. Um, and then I suppose it probably ought to set it to the color that it says it'll set it to. So white, black, and green. And if everything is uh, is up and good, we should be able to change the text color. Uh, my favorite combination is uh, if I hit menu, text color, um, I kind of like black on green. Cool, so now we've got this green text, which is kind of neat. And if I go back to the menu, it should start with having green selected, which it does. So red, um, black on black, uh, doesn't look so good, you can't see it. Should I kind of can see it. Oh, it's because my background is a dark gray. Um, white on white will be nice and visible. Oh yeah, that's completely gone. Um, so you can play around with that until you get pretty bored with it. Uh, probably won't take you too long to get bored with it, uh, but you can see that now you've learned about uh, submenus um, and radio buttons. Uh, next thing that I'd like for you to do is I'd like for you to get some practice trying things on your own. Um, so here's some more information about what we did uh, with, uh, with our different colors. Um, you should know how to do groups and submenus, so I would like for you to try to do one on your own. Um, what I would like for you to do on your own um, is to make a, um, another submenu. Um, this one is going to be for the alignment, so whether it's aligned to the top or to the left. Uh, there are these string resources that you're going to need. Um, well, you know, you don't have to use them, but it's a lot easier to copy paste them than to type yourself. Um, and what you're going to make is you're going to make a um, another menu item. Um, the icon for this one is called the compass. Um, I kind of cheated a little bit here, um, and I used the compass for alignment. It was close enough. Um, and when you click on alignment, um, have it open up a sub menu uh, with check boxes. Um, so go ahead and take a minute and see if you can make that happen. We'll we'll implement the, the, the callback together, but see if you can make it show up on your own. Again, make sure you're doing these things. Uh, but now I'm going to show you how I did it. Um, so the first thing that you need to do is you need to make a new item. Um, if you click on Add, um, you don't want to create it within this one. Um, so you can just select... Um, create new item at the top level in the menu. The other thing you could do is you could hold down command and click on it to deselect it <coughs> and then it'll default to the top layer. 
as much as before. I don't really need an ID for this one. Um, all I needed to do is I needed to launch a submenu. Um, since it's part of the icon menu, I'm going to go ahead and give it an icon uh, using that compass one. Again, wish there was an autocomplete there, but there does not seem to be. Inside this, I'm going to create a new uh, menu. Um, and inside that menu, I'm going to have a group. The group does not need a name, but it does need a, a clickable behavior. Um, and this one, they're all going to individually have clickable behavior. We're going to have two items that we add. Uh, we're going to add one item, uh, which I'll call, I'll just call it align top. Um, and it's going to have the text top. Again, no need for an icon here. It won't do you any good. We're, we're in a sub menu at this point. And then align left. And its title is going to be left. Cool. Once you've got those things added, um, if you fire it off again um, and click on menu, hopefully you got a new menu item that says align and has the little compass. Um, and when you click it, um, it says left um, and top. Um, either order doesn't matter to me. Um, and you can click on them. Uh, but just like before, um, it doesn't automatically check for you. Um, that's going to be respons your responsibility uh, in code, uh, which is kind of a pain, but eh, it's, it's, it's no biggie. Cool. So let's go ahead and um, make these uh, callbacks actually do something. So let's uh, visit our code again and make some new uh, cases. So we've got um, an align top. Um, and then we've also got a um, align left. Cool. Uh, the first thing that I'd like to do is I'd like to make that clickable behavior uh, get set right. Um, so I want to say set checked. Before, I was able to just say true, and that worked great with a radio group. Uh, but with a checkbox, I'm going to have to do something different. Um, I'm going to have to look to see if it's currently checked, um, and then I'm going to have to change its value. So I'm going to say, um, make it not, um, not um, whatever it was. So if it is checked, there's a function called is checked. Um, make it the inverse of that. Um, so kind of toggle it. So it's a pretty simple way to make a little toggle. Um, so with that little addition, uh, we should be able to check it. Um, and then when we come back, um, it should be toggled as appropriate. Um, so now it is checked and I can check this one. Uh, I had a student in class that was really bothered by the fact that the menu goes away um, every time you click on it. Um, to be honest, if you, if you wanted to do something more specific, um, then really what you should do if you don't want it to go away is you should probably be using a dialog instead of a submenu. Um, so there are times where things should be dialogs. We haven't gotten to dialogs yet. Uh, we will uh, soon enough. Um, so for now, just kind of accept that it goes away um, and because it's a submenu. Um, and if you want it to be a dialog, you know, you could change it later. Uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to make this actually change the text. So when you hit top, I want it to pop up to the top. And when you say left, I want it to shoot over to the left side. Uh, I'll catch the slides up a little bit here. Um, in order to do that, it's a little sneaky, to be honest. Um, it was a little harder than I was hoping. Um, the way you do it is you set um, properties um, of the layout. So just to say what I'm talking about here, if you click on the text view, this is in main.xml, you can see that the text view has properties, right? So there are things that a text view can do. And depending on who its parent is, um, it also has this, it's called misc up here, uh, but these are the layout parameters. Layout parameters are different depending on who the parent is. If it's a frame, he has frame layout parameters. Um, if it's a relative layout, he has relative layout layout parameters. Um, if it's a linear layout, it has linear layout layout parameters. Um, and so I don't want to harp on this, so I'm just going to let you um, copy the code and I'll explain to you what it does. So what we want to do here is we want to change these layout parameters. 
Um, so the first thing we do, if we want to get the movie quotes layout parameters, we say movie quote, get layout parameters. Um, and then this one is specifically a frame layout layout parameter. So I'm, I typecast it to the appropriate type. Um, and I just store it off, right? And then what I do on this object um, is I'm going to make a change to its gravity. Um, so this is the layout gravity because it's part of the layout. So I'm going to say frame layout dot gravity. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to toggle a bit in there. Um, so there's this bit mask uh, called left, uh, gravity dot left. Um, and I'm going to exclusive or it to toggle that bit. Um, and then once I've toggled that bit, um, I'm going to write it back. So I'm going to say set layout parameters and I'm going to write it back. Um, and then this one we've already done, uh, setting the, the checked. Since I'm going to want this in multiple places, or at least two switch statements, the way I chose to do it um, was I chose to just grab the layout parameters before the switch statement. Um, admittedly, some of the switch statements don't, don't need me to capture it, but it was easier to put up there. Because um, if you put it inside, there's, there's some name conflicts because you have it twice, so it's just easier to put up there. Um, and then inside um, the left one, I'm going to toggle the left bit. So I'm going to toggle uh, left. It doesn't know about the gravity class, so Control Shift O, fix that up. Um, and then inside top, um, there's another one just called gravity dot top. Um, and so that will toggle the top. So if you run it now, um, when you click these things, um, it should change the layout parameters. Took me a little longer than I'd like to admit to figure out how that worked, um, but I get stubborn about things. Um, so if I say layout on the top, boom, snaps to the top. Um, if I want it to be green so you can see it a little bit better, uh, you can see it's up there. And if I say, hey, take it off the top, uncheck it, it comes back down. Um, if I say left, um, goes over to the left, left and top uh, goes up there. It didn't go all the way to the left because this text field is 200 wide. Um, once we start using different text, um, it'll feel like it goes all the way over. Uh, this, uh, this solution was uh, good enough to work. Um, you can see that we set these two things um, for changing that um, gravity bit. If you wanted a more robust solution, uh, this one worked fine because it started off in the appropriate state, but if you want it to start off in some weird state, uh, this is a more robust solution. Um, I'm guessing you don't care, uh, but here it is because I was playing with it. So we've pretty much covered the icon menu. We showed you the expanded menu. We've got a real good idea of what submenus are. Uh, the other big one is the context menu. Context menus are specific for each view, so each view could have its own separate context menu. In this example, we're just going to do one um, on the text view. And context menus can do all the things we've done so far, except icons. Um, they can make radio groups, they can make checkboxes, they can make submenus, um, whatever makes you happy. We're going to do just a very simple context menu. Uh, so let's go ahead and read what Google has to say about it. Um, Basically, a context menu is, you know, what you would get on a, a, a PC with a right click, um, you know, um, but there is no right click on Android devices, so it's a long press. So if you press something and hold down, um, it'll pop up the, the context menu for you. And it can be a really handy thing to use in your apps. There are two important functions on a context menu. Works very similar to the options menu. Uh, there's a create, um, so it's called on create context menu. Um, and then there is a, when you click an item, um, on context item selected. I don't believe there's a prepare, uh, which I guess surprises me. Um, but uh, I guess you could look into it if you needed a prepare. The context menu passes in more than just the menu. Um, probably the most important thing it passes in is it passes in the view. Um, so for example, you may want to do a switch statement. Um, where you switch based on the ID of the view that called you to like get you here. For our app, there's only one, so we don't have to use a switch statement, but normally you would. So normally you would have a, a switch based on, hey, who just called me? Um, so yeah, I guess it just calls this every time, so it doesn't need a prepare. So let's go ahead and let's add some code uh, for the context menu. 
So just like we did before, start typing on create context menu, um, control space, um, and it'll make the stub for you. Uh, this one doesn't return anything, so I'm just going to go ahead and why not? I'll let it call super. I'm pretty sure I don't have to, but I'm going to let it call super because sometimes um, I get myself in trouble. Yeah, on pause uh, definitely needs to call the super, uh, but this one I don't think it has to. So typically you'd switch based on the view. Um, we don't have to in this case because we're just going to put up one context menu. The way we're going to put it up is actually very similar to what we did before. Uh, we're going to grab a menu inflator. So this one's going to be the context menu inflator. And you can name it whatever you want. Um, and you're going to get a menu inflator. The activity um, is able to give you one. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, context menu inflator, do that thing you do um, and inflate uh, a menu for me. The menu that oh, I misspelled it. The menu we're going to be inflating is context menu, uh, and stick it into the menu that was passed in. So the menu got passed in. Inflate it into this guy, um, and I'm going to change my variable name to be er er. Um, it's yelling at us because we don't have a context menu, so I suppose we ought to fix that. So if we right click, um, oops, I got to do my option command in, Android XML file, context menu dot XML. Um, exactly the same as what you've done before with menus. Uh, the only difference is you, you're not allowed to have icons, uh, but you can have check boxes and things like that. Um, what we're going to do is going to be very simple. Uh, we're just going to add a bunch of items. Um, each item um, doesn't even need an ID. You can delete the ID. The only thing it needs is a title. Uh, for the titles, they're going to be a bunch of strings. Uh, so let's go ahead and copy them uh, from the slides. So a lot of different movie quotes, some of which you might like, some of which you might not like so well. Uh, but we'll copy and paste them into the strings.xml. See if I age myself by what movie quotes I decided to pick. Ooh, refresh property encountered and incurred. Um, I'm going to have to restart my clips. I'll let it happen twice before I give up. Um, so each of these is just going to have a title. Um, so the first one's going to say movie quote zero, no ID at all. Um, once I make one, uh, like I say, it's kind of easier to mass produce um, in code. So there's, um, I'll just put in all 10. You don't have to put in 10, you can put in a few. Um, and the only thing they're going to have is a title, uh, which was just uh, a different number for what movie quote it is. So I did 0 through 9. So at this point, you might hope that the context menu would do something, because We've defined the XML resource. Um, these, this is totally valid. These are the simplest menu items you can get, but they're they're valid menu items. Um, and we've got um, <clears throat> the on create context menu, um, and it's getting inflated. Um, there is, however, one additional step uh, with the context menu. Um, that additional step is it's called for a particular view. Um, and so before a view will call it, you have to register uh, that view for the context menu. Um, so register uh, for the context menu. Uh, the view that we'd like to register um, is the movie quote text view. Cool. And then whenever, um, whenever it creates the context menu and it calls this function, uh, that view that's passed in um, would be the movie quote text view. So like I said before, you could do a switch statement for which context menu you want to show. But since there's only one, there's no need for a switch statement. Um, we'll just show uh, those movie quotes. So if you go ahead and run this, um, and you uh, long press um, on that view, so I just uh, hold it down, um, it brings up uh, the context menu. Um, so you can see the context menu has all these different movie um, titles in it. Um, you can click on them, they don't do anything yet. One thing that's kind of missing is you'll notice that there's no, there's no like title at the top of this, this sub-menu. Um, I wish that there was, um, so let's add it. 
I found this kind of weird the first time I saw it is <clears throat> in the XML, um, there's really no way to add a title. Um, and I, that kind of surprised me. Um, so you have to do this one in code, um, which is funny that, you know, Google recommends you use XML, but then there's things you can't do there. Um, but it's easy enough to fix. Um, so inside the create context menu, um, there's a couple things you can set on the header. Uh, you can set the icon, uh, the title, a couple other things. Um, so we definitely want to set the title, um, and we're going to set it to, um, I'm going to say get string, um, r dot string dot, um, what was it, select movie quote, select quote. Um, and then also, um, so you can run it now. Um, so now it should have a, a title up there, which I think looks really sharp. Um, so it pops up and it says select quote. Uh, you can also set what icon um, is here. Um, if you wanted to do that, you just say set header icon. Um, and I don't know, um, I didn't really give you an icon for this one, so we'll just set it to the, uh, the Android icon. Why not? Um, the Android icon looks pretty sharp. I don't really like the more icon very much. So now it's got an, a cute little Android icon. You, you should probably either make your own or leave it with the more. The, the Android one is not appropriate. Um, I just wanted to show you that you could change it. Um, so next we want to make this do something when you click it. Um, so <clears throat> just like before, uh, we have a create. Um, and then when something is selected, um, we have an on context um, item selected. So when a context item gets selected, um, it calls this function. This one's going to be um, typically very similar. Um, you know, you would typically have a switch statement where you switch based on the item's ID. Um, this particular menu is so simple, uh, we don't need to do that. Um, I'll go ahead and call super even though I don't think I need to. Um, and the only thing I want to do is I want to get the title uh, from the menu item um, and set the text um, in the movie quote. Uh, to do that, I can just say this dot movie quote set text. Um, and the text that I'm going to set it to um, is whatever the item's title is. So I'm going to set his text uh, to that title. Uh, very simple, um, not, no, no real frills here. Run it. Um, I'll change it to something that's easier for you to see. Green's easier to see. Um, so if we long press on it, uh, we can switch the quote to whatever you want. Um, I switch it to I'll be back. Um, let's see here, what's a good quote in here? Oh, this one's classic. Uh, Hello, my name is Nigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. You can see how many you recognize. Um, and so that's kind of what we're uh, what we're wanting to do. Um, you can change the alignment of it. Uh, you can change the background color. Uh, you can change the text color. Um, and then now with the context menu, uh, you can change what the quote says. Cool. So we'll wrap it up here with the slides. Uh, flip through a couple of these things. Uh, references here for uh, for if you ever need to come back to look at some of this stuff. Um, we used it to set. Um, oh, one interesting thing is get title actually returns a character sequence. Um, a character sequence is actually an interface. Um, string implements a uh, character sequence, so you could uh, could grab it as a string, uh, but. Android chooses to use this character sequence to make it more versatile because um, many things could be, you know, like a string uh, that aren't really strings. Um, so they use character interface a lot of times. Uh, but to be honest, most of the time I just, I just really want the string out of it. Um, cool. So changing quote, good fun. Um, so now we've got um, finished app. So we're done with, uh, done with Hello Menu. Um, you kind of know everything you might need to know about menus. I've seen a lot of different ones. Uh, the icon menu, um, the expanded menu, if you have too many, you can grab this more. 
um, and then the context menu, uh, which was shown here, and then also uh, submenus, um, and then the groups for them. Like I say, uh, the Google menus um, tutorial does a really nice job of explaining this. Um, if you ever want to, just go through and read what they've got. Um, you'll see that my stuff comes directly from theirs. Um, so I, I pretty much cover everything they do. Uh, plus, I gave you an example uh, that you can refer to later. Uh, so that's it. I uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Uh, the next activity you should do if you want to get better um, at uh, using menus um, is to do a lab yourself. Um, so there's a lab uh, for doing um, menus. Um, it's lab four, actually. Um, so lab four, it's called Snakes on a Menu. Uh, just to tell you what this uh, lab has you do is it takes you through um, starting with Google Snakes on a phone uh, sample app um, and adding a few different, uh, different menu items, which is kind of neat. I uh, should get you some practice with menus. Uh, do that on your own. Uh, best way to submit some of this information. See you next time.